you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. So far, in the book of Romans, we've seen a few things, a few major things. We've seen that salvation is for everybody. Amen. <clears throat> We've seen that no matter what, you can be saved. We've seen that Jesus Christ is the only way for salvation. We've seen that Jesus died for all. We've seen that no matter who you are, what you've done, where you've been, the, 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 your background, the color of your skin, the, 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 where you, how much money you got, that Jesus loves you. And we've gone through all of these things. And today, we're going to talk about, now that we know, and hopefully you're saved, now we're going to talk about what it, this chapter, verse chapter 12, chapter number 12, is going to tell us how we ought to live as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ. Once we've been saved, how we are to be. And the first thing that we're going to talk about this morning is how to be a living sacrifice. Now, when you think of sacrifice, what do you think of? Well, when I say the word sacrifice, what comes to your mind? I can tell you, what comes to my mind is the Old Testament. Uh, whenever whenever the, the, the uh, 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 Jews would present sacrifices uh, unto Christ, whenever they would uh, sacrifice for their sins, or, 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 or even the high priest making sacrifice for the whole nation, and, and those sacrifices could be what? Well, they could be uh, 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 an ox, they could be a goat, they could be a lamb, they could be uh, uh, a pigeon. There was different things that, that were sacrificed unto the Lord. And now we've learned already that we no longer have to have a sacrifice. Why do we no longer have to execute and, and, or, or go through and have sacrifices? Because we've already had the perfect sacrifice. Amen. Jesus Christ you know what the, 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 the difference between sacrifices in the Old Testament and who Jesus Christ was is the sacrifices in the Old Testament never forgave a mother's sin. Their Old Testament sacrifices never uh, 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 dispersed their sin. It was a picture of the sacrifice to come. We've got a perfect lamb. Is there anything perfect here on earth? You know, you may look at a newborn baby and you say, well, it's perfect. But the truth of the matter is, is that baby, that newborn baby is not perfect. The newborn baby, eventually, the Lord carries his coming, will grow old and die. It's not perfect. That brand new baby is born with a sin nature. But folks, we have a perfect Sacrifice. So in that we have a perfect sacrifice, we are to do what? We're to follow in Christ's footsteps. We are to uh, take him as our example and to live as he did. And we are to present a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Verse number 1 and 2 of Romans chapter 12 is where we're going to look at this morning. Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, that you present yourselves, a, uh, your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your body, that you may prove what is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Of God. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning thankful for the perfect sacrifice that we've had, that we've experienced, Lord. That Lord Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for our sins because He loved us, not because He had to. And the free pardon of sin 
that we all can have because of it. Lord, I ask that you be with those amongst us who are hurting, Lord, and the bereavement uh, that comes with loss or whatever the case may be. Lord, we've all got hurt in this world. And I pray that you would comfort the hurt. You would comfort the problems that you would, you would, uh, we, we would lean on you that you could be there for us. And we know, Lord, that you can help us. Lord, I ask that you just be with the message this morning. That we would learn to do that which you called us to do. I ask that you just hide me behind the cross this morning, Lord, as I preach your word. I ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. A living sacrifice. Those two words don't go together, do they? A living sacrifice. A sacrifice is usually something that has been killed, something that has been uh, uh, gotten rid of, something that you uh, uh, that has taken the stead of something else. But a living sacrifice. I want to say something this morning. Have you ever had to sacrifice something? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not talking about no sacrificing an animal or something like that. Sacrificing your time. Sacrificing uh, 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 money. Sacrificing things uh, that we, in order for something else or someone else, sacrificing is hard. But sacrificing time, money, effort is hard at times. That's why it's called sacrifice. It's not easy. And usually... Sacrificing comes with a price. First, we look here. He says, I beseech therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. I want to say, anything and everything that we do is by the mercies of God. Amen. The, the, the fact this morning that we're able to come to His house and worship Him and sit here is by the mercies of God. We've looked in, the, uh, in, in chapters past in the book of Romans and we see that the reason that we know Jesus Christ as our Savior is by the mercies of God. The reason that we know that we're a sinner was by the mercies of God. And the reason that I'm going to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus Christ one day is by the mercies of God. Folks, we don't ever need to forget that. That it is by the mercies of God that we are what we are. You say, well, I ain't very much. Well, it's by the mercies of God. You ought to say what you'd be with like without it. The mercies of God. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now this word it says bodies, but this is our whole being. Okay, If you get down to the root word, this is our whole being. Is to be a living sacrifice unto God. Because you can say, oh well I, I, the Bible says to present my body a living sacrifice. So, so, so I'm going to take care of my body. I'm going to eat good and I'm going to work out and I'm going to look like a Greek God so that I can present my body a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Now, listen to me. We've been to eat here in a little while. <laughs> but we are supposed to take care of our bodies. We are. I'm supposed to have this belly and stuff like that. But that's just not what it's... It's talking about our whole being. Bodies included, but our whole being, our mind, our, 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 our work ethic, the things that we do, the way we interact with people, our bodies, uh, how, we, how we interact with one another, our whole being. We are to present our bodies a living sacrifice. He goes into a little more detail. He starts with holy. How many among you are holy? Hey, the Lord Jesus Christ made me that way. Amen. I don't know what to tell you. Hey, none of us are holy amongst ourselves. That's right. None of us are holy by ourselves. None of us have anything holy about us except for Jesus Christ. That's the only way. That's the only thing that is holy about me. Do you want me to... Uh, the, way I, uh, the way I interact with people, it's not holy. The way that I would, I would treat people is not holy. The way that I would uh, carry about my everyday life would not be holy except 
for Jesus Christ. Amen. And guess what? I can still make a choice. There's nothing holy about me except Jesus Christ. Acceptable unto God. Now here's the here's 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 where we get into a little bit of uh, uh, preaching, okay? Uh, acceptable unto God. What is acceptable to God? Uh, think about it before you answer. What is acceptable unto God? I guess you could start with what is unacceptable to God. Well, there's one word, three letters that is unacceptable to God. And that's sin. And here's the bad news, folks. Y'all are all eat up with it. And I'm not saying y'all like I'm not. I'm eat up with it. We're all eat up with it. Sin. Sin is unacceptable. There are no exceptions. There is no, well, this one isn't so bad as this one. Sin is unacceptable to God. And, and I'm tired. I am tired of God's people and, and people who, places who claim to be churches, organizations, whatever, who minimize sin of any kind. Sin is sin. And there's no good sin, bad sin, little sin, less sin, less sin. Sin is sin. God said sin is sin. So therefore, who are we to characterize it otherwise? Sin is sin. And sin is not acceptable to God. Folks, there's churches out there, well, organizations, y'all know what I'm saying. I don't believe they're Lord's churches. Who affirm these things. And they're doing it in the sense of, well, Jesus Christ accepts all. I'll tell you something. We've seen that very clearly, have we not? <laughs> that Jesus Christ absolutely died for all. God accepts all. There was no one that was left out. There is nobody that's left out from the grace of God. And you, anybody and everybody, can be saved. That doesn't mean they ought to stay in their sin. That's right. We've got places that, 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 that affirm homosexuality. We've got places, I heard one the other day, that, that affirm the pedophilia. That if that's how they, if that's how they, that, what, what attracts them or whatever, I'm going to tell you something. That is disgusting. There, there's no other way. I, I don't think I could, I can't stand up here and say all the things it is. It's wrong. Just because someone feels a certain way don't make it right. Guess what? I have a lot of ways that I feel that's sinful. My heart is sinful. There's nothing good about me. But folks, what is unacceptable to God is sin. And we are to present only that which is acceptable to God. <coughs> Think about that the next time that you're going to an action that you're going to make. Because guess what? Whether you think about it or not, everything you do is presented to God. You think about that? Ever thought about that? Everything you do is presented to God. Uh, there's a sermon that, that I preached before that, that talks to, it was, I think it's titled something like Good and Rotten Fruit. And, and whatever you're doing, you're presenting it to God. Are you presenting rock, rotten fruit or are you presenting good fruit? Everything we do. We should only present unto the Lord what is acceptable unto God. And folks, there's a lot of unacceptable things being brought to the Lord. We need to make sure that what we do is only that that is acceptable to the Lord. Both in our, our, our uh, life that we live every day the life that, that we're, when we're going to work, the life whenever we're at home, the life whenever we're here, because it's all one. Amen. It's all one. Everything. Be acceptable unto God. And here's why. Now listen, you know, uh, in the Bible at times we can make, uh, we, can, we, can, we can say things like, oh, and we can maybe, we can maybe dress it up where it is and show it's staunch or something. But listen to what was written here. It says you're to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You want me to break that down into our 
Arkansas terms. It says you ought to do all these things because it's the least, the absolute least you should do. It's your reasonable service. It's the least we can do. Folks, whenever you realize and understand that you have been saved from your sin, the least that we can do is live for Jesus Christ. The least that we can do is present ourselves and live our life the way that He expects us to live. We all have battles to face. We all have a, a temptation in our way. We all have things that, that, that we struggle with. But I'm going to tell you today, the least we can do is live for Jesus Christ. The least. You know, that saying, we kind of get it mixed up. Oh, it's the least I can do. Say it. Break it down. It is the least we can do. The smallest amount <coughs> is live for the Lord. Present our bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. Acceptable unto God. It is our reasonable service. Now I'm going to get into verse 2 here. We're going to come back and look at verse 1. It's going to kind of play off of each other. But I want to tell you, verse 2 will punch you right in the gut. I mean, it'll punch you right in the gut. It'll, it'll take the wind out of your sails. And, 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 and if you, you leave here mad at me today, I'm sorry. Take it up with the Lord. Because the first part there says that be not conformed to this world. Can I, can I just be honest with you this morning? I'm not pulling no punches. I'm not picking on nobody. I'm preaching it myself. We've conformed to this world. We have conformed to this world. Each and every single one of us has conformed to this world. We have made, the, the world has made things in a way where we don't even bat eyes at things. We have conformed to this world. Our, we, we, we don't do the things that we are expected to as God's children. We have conformed to this world. And it's a sad thing. It's a sad thing. Post the way that God tells us. I'll give you an example. How many of you know that something, there's something that you ought to be doing? There's something that God, that, that fill in the blank, whether it's reading your Bible, whether it's praying more, whether it's coming to church, whether it's uh, the, being the person you ought to be out in public, living the life you ought to live, whether it's the mouth you way you talk, whether, whatever. And yet, we choose not to. You know what you've done? You have conformed to the world. There's a lot. You know, folks, we can sit here all day long and, have a, and just list out the things that we do, and we could just stay here all day, and we could just have a, 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 a terrible time. But, and we'd still miss some. But folks, if the Lord said it's wrong, just because it's the year 2023, doesn't make it right all of a sudden. Amen. Again, I could sit here and make lists and name them. It wouldn't be nothing you ain't heard me say probably already. <coughs> be not conformed to the world. You say, well, you say I'm, already, I'm already conformed, so what's the difference? If I'm already here, if I've already conformed, guess what? You can go back. You can take, you know, you ever been walking down some way, you realize it's the wrong way, what do you do? Do you just keep on going? Yesterday, I, I get so aggravated. You try and go somewhere and get on your phone and you got it where you can see where you're going. If you ever, or, you know, when you get up in Little Rock, we don't have that problem here, but you get up in Little Rock and there'll be like two eggs that's right there beside each other and one of them goes 
this way and the other one goes that way and you're looking at it and it says you better take this one right here and so you say okay and take it and there's the next one and you get to going the wrong way what do you do? Do you say well I'm just going to keep on going this way uh -huh. I, you know, I was headed north and now I'm going south I guess if I just keep going far enough south eventually I'll be going north <laughs> or do you turn around because you're going the wrong way why do we continue? What, what, what sense does it make to say, well, I've been this way for so long, yeah, I know it's wrong, but it's too late to change now. What sense does that make? To say, well, I've been going down this road the wrong way for five miles, I might as well just keep going. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? Why continue going the wrong way when we know it's the wrong way? We've been conformed to the world. You say, well, it hasn't killed me yet. It will. We can get into some deep stuff, deep stuff this morning. The Lord can take it away. The Lord can take other things away. It, it, it scares me to death. And I'm going to say this because it, 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 it scares me to death. Seeing people choose their children over God. It scares me to death. Because God can take away what you're putting in front of Him. So well, that's cruel. That's just terrible. You're looking at it through a lens of hate. Look at it through a lens of love. You put your kids above God, and guess what? You, you put any what happens when you put anything against God above God? I can take it away. These people that, that, that oh, uh, my kids don't really want to go to church, so we don't, we don't go. You're making a terrible mistake, first of all. But second of all, you're, 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 you're making something above the Lord. Your, your spouse or your partner or whatever. Put them above God, and guess what? They'll fall apart. <coughs> I've seen it, folks. I've seen it. This isn't something I'm making up. I've seen it with my own eyes. People living a life that maybe they 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 they, they should or, or they're making efforts to do and they slack off and then they just decide I'm done with it, whatever. I'm just going to go do my own thing because my spouse, whatever I'm going to spend. People say Sunday's the only day off I got to spend with my kids and wife or whatever. Bring them to church. Amen. I, I don't understand. Bring them to church. Spend time with them. That's better than anything else you can do with them. Teach them about the Lord. We have too many people that have conformed to the world, and the world says, whatever you want to do, you can do it. Mm -hmm. There is no wrong. You know, there's this thing going around that you live your truth. Folks, there ain't but one truth. Amen. It ain't your truth. It ain't my truth. It's God's truth. There ain't one truth. People say, you know, when there's, when there's two people bickering, there's only one truth. There's usually three stories, but there's one truth. There's their story, the other guy's story, and the truth. Be not conformed to the world. Put your work above the Lord. Guess what? He'll take away your ability to work. Tell them. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Whenever you're saved, folks, there's a change. Whenever you've truly accepted Jesus Christ, there's a change. And I'm going to tell you this morning, if there wasn't a change in, in your profession, after your profession of salvation between whenever you were lost and whenever you professed Jesus Christ, if there wasn't a change, if there wasn't a, 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 a difference in the way you thought, if there wasn't a difference in the way you acted, if there wasn't a difference in the way that you lived, if there wasn't a difference in the Holy Spirit pricking your heart whenever you did wrong, I'm going to tell you something, you ain't saved. Now we can make the choice to get away from God. We can make a choice where we don't even hear God no more and you can still be saved. But I'm going to tell you something. If you've never experienced a difference and you just neglected it, you don't know Jesus Christ. When the Bible clearly says in black and white 
that you are changed mm -hmm. when you're saved. When you come to know Jesus Christ, it's such a miraculous thing, you can't help but be changed. Mm -hmm. Did I say that you, if you're not, if you're sinless, or if you're not sinless, that you're not saved? You no, know, I sure didn't. You can, I don't care how long you're saved or how short amount of time you're saved, you're still a sinner. But, if there's not a change in your mind, if there's not a change in your heart, if there's not a change in your walk, Jesus Christ will change everything about you. Everything. There's no stone left unturned unless you don't want him to turn it. <coughs> be not conformed, but rather be transformed. Allow God to transform you. We've got too many people that are letting the world influence their decisions. Let the world influence what they do. Let the world influence. Great example. Some of y'all will remember. I, I've looked at it and I've looked into it and I've read things and articles and I've talked to people, but I can't remember. But there was a doctor years ago come out with something about how, to, how you ought to raise your kids. What was his name? Spock. Spock. Dr. Spock. That, that sounds mm -hmm. like something in yeah, that's space him. or something. But isn't there something Spock in space? In <coughs> uh, there was a big shift in, well, well you got to raise your kids this way because this is what works today. Folks, we ought to let the Bible raise our kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We already got a book on how to raise our kids. We already got a book on how to love our spouse. We already got a book on how we are to live and treat our workplace. We already got all of those things. Now, am I saying that there isn't good material out there that, that, that can help you and that can get you through things and that can uh, put it in different terms? There's good things that way. I've got books. Books aren't the problem. But whenever we start throwing out what God said and putting in what somebody else said, we get into trouble. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you this morning, I'm your pastor. I believe God's put me here. You called me here. You believe God put me here. Don't ever listen to nothing I say. Listen to what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. When you start saying, yeah, the Bible says this, but my preacher says that, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Don't ever say, I know what God says, God's word says, but just don't even go there. If you ever find your mind thinking that, don't even go there. Because once we put that but and we add something else, we're in trouble. What God's word says is what God's word says. And we ought to listen to it. We ought to live our life by it. We ought to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Folks, if you're not living your life for the will of God, you're living your life wrong. It's my life. My life to live is a big, one of the biggest lies in the world. It is not your life to live. It is not your life to do with what you think you ought to do. It is not your life to live to do the things you think is right. It is your life to give to God. Amen. It is your life to say, Lord, here I am. What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to talk to? How do you want me to do it? I think about examples that we have throughout the, throughout the scriptures. I think of Abraham. I think of Isaac, I think of Jacob, I think of, uh, uh, I think of the apostles, I think of, of, uh, of Saul, whenever he was called the very man writing this. I think of all of these great people that we see whenever they said, Lord, here I am. What do you have me to do? I think of Abraham because whenever he was told to, to go, what, what did he do? He went. He went. Think of different people that, that, that does it ever say they're perfect? You look at King David. We know that man wasn't perfect. We got in scripture black and white where he made bad mistakes. But 
but he always turned back the bull. He, he's going down that wrong way, and he said, oh man, I'm going the wrong way. He turned around and he went back the other way. We've got too many people that decide that they just need to continue on, folks. We are to present our bodies a living, our whole beings a living sacrifice. When is the last time? Answer this in your mind. And this is important. This hopefully you understand how sad this can be. When's the last time you made a decision? And in that decision making process, you said, What does God want me to do? What is God's will? You don't know why that's sad? Because most of the times we don't consult the Lord at all. <coughs> Most of the time we say, oh, we just make decisions willy-nilly. And when we ended up in the valley, and it's dark, and it's cold, and we're hungry, and we're lonely, and we look up and say, Lord, why don't you care about me? You let me get down here. Whenever it's us that put ourselves there, because we didn't consult the Lord at all. But that word proof. We're going to look at that before we close. It says, do these things so that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What do we have to prove? That word prove, what, is it, what does it entail? It entails, if, 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 if I say that the sky is blue and Brother Van says, no, the sky is purple and and we go outside and I say, look up. That's me proving him wrong, right? Unless it's near sunset. Sometimes it's got purple in it. And we can argue it. There's people looking at you all the time. There's people looking at you right now. All the time. There's people look at you at your job. There's people look at you in your home. There's people look at you out to eat. There's people look at you here in the church. We ought to be doing the will of God to prove to them that we believe, number one, we believe what Jesus, what, what we believe is true. Because sometimes we, we don't live and we don't act like we really believe what God's Word says. But maybe, remember in chapter 11, that just maybe somebody else can come to know Jesus Christ by the way that you're living your life. Wouldn't that be amazing? How, how great, how, much, how awesome would that be, make you feel if somebody come to you and said, you know what, I see how you're living your life. And there's something about it that I need. There's something about it that's not like everybody else. There's something about you. There's something about, you've got something that I want to know what it is. And you tell them, I don't know what to tell you other than Jesus Christ. They say, I want it. Tell me about it. How great would that be? I think I'd just start jumping up and down hollering. Mm -hmm. I think I'd be so excited I don't know if I'd be able to tell. That's how we ought to live our life. Whenever Jesus lived his life here on earth, there was a woman, it seems like the story comes to me, that knew there was something so different about him that if she could just touch the bottom of his garment, she knew that it had healed him. Can you imagine there was men that said, Lord, there's something different about you. You think of Nicodemus when he come to you, to him. He said, you know, you're not from here. Guess what? Neither am I. I'm not, this world isn't where I, this isn't my home. I'm not from here. My home is in heaven. Damn. My home is with the Lord. And folks, we ought to act like it. When you run into somebody, which we, well, it's probably us that's the one. But you go up north somewhere and you start talking and people say, you ain't from around here, are you? You're not from around here, are you? <laughs> <laughs> that was and you say, why? Why well, you couldn't tell? And it's because they, they, they know you're not from here. You're different. They can tell just by the way you talk, by the way you dress, by the way you walk. Same thing ought to be with us as being Christians. People ought to know they ought to be able to tell by the way we walk. They ought to be able to tell by the way we interact with people. They ought to be able to tell because we have made our whole being a living sacrifice unto Jesus Christ. 
that everything we do is only to bring Him honor and glory and it's only acceptable unto Him. And when we fail and whenever we realize that we have been doing something that is unacceptable to Jesus Christ, unacceptable to God, that we don't continue off in it, that we turn around and we come back and we get back to what is acceptable unto the Lord. Folks, we have a duty and it's the very least that we can do. It is our reasonable service unto Him to make our whole being a living sacrifice unto Him. I want to tell you this morning, you say, I've been going off this way. I know what's right. I know I ought to. Come back and let's <coughs> fix it. Let the Lord fix it. Get it right. Don't keep going in your wrong ways. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, you can today. You've been going down this road of sin. You've been going down this path that leads to destruction, leads to hell eternal. And you can turn around and you can come to Jesus Christ right now. Amen. Amen. All it is is accepting Him as your Savior. He's calling you. Won't you come? Won't you make your body a living sacrifice unto Him? Let's all stand. We get ready to have a verse of invitation this morning. As the Lord calls you.